Hello everybody, this is Petey from Bergen Arcade at BergenArcade.com and here we are today with another tutorial in Unity. Now this is going to be based off of one of the questions I get asked quite a bit and it's how do we communicate with a remote server? And there's a few things you usually want to do with a remote server. Uh, one is maybe just communicate to a specific script on the server which will go out and do everything that needs to be done on that server and then just respond back to you. Uh, such things as uh, maybe communicate with some application running on that server, maybe it's a database. Uh, there's really tons of stuff it can do. And I really do think it is something that's important to learn how to do. And Unity has a great example on their wiki. I'll go ahead and post a link to that down below. Uh, but I'm going to break it down a little bit simpler. Almost the exact same scripts. Just I'm going to take some of the, uh, the debugging out just to kind of clean things up, make it very easy and simple for, for you to understand. So if this is something you've been wondering, hopefully this helps you out. So let's jump over and let's take a look. Okay, so here we are. I've gone ahead and created a new project. Uh, I've written one script, created a scene, which is really just the scene. I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna create a new game object. Let's see if I remember how to do this. There we go. Remember the keyboard shortcut. So I'm just gonna call this example 001. It's the exact same as the script. Now I'm just going to go ahead and drag that on. And uh, let's just take a look at the script right now. We have a post URL and a get URL. Now these are just the URLs. Let me go ahead and see if it stretches over a bit. We don't actually need both windows here, so I'm going to move that over. And if we take a look here, it's just the URL to the scripts that we want to communicate to on the server. And we'll take a look at some example scripts uh, later on. And like I said, there is an example on the wiki for Unity that uh, is very good for, I guess, the next step after this one. Uh, but anyway, you just want the URL for where to send it to and where to retrieve from. Now, of course, these can be the same script, but uh, I prefer to keep them separate. And I'm not sure why my variables are not showing up. And now I can't move it. What's going on? There we go. Uh... I moved the wrong thing. My bad. That's why. So we'll go ahead. We're going to shrink this up because I want a little bit more room. And let's go ahead. We'll jump in and take a look at the script. So right up the top, the class that you're going to want to be concerned with is the www class. Or I guess for those in southern United States, it could be the www or how you. I think that's how you say it. The, the w. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Uh, go ahead. Here's a link to it on uh, the Unity site. Go ahead and take a look there because there are things you're going to want to read up on for it. And the more advanced script on their wiki, again, right here. But let's try to break some of it down and make it a little bit simpler. So the using statements you should be used to by now. I've gone ahead and created two public strings. These are the URLs for where to go send the data and where to go retrieve the data. I've gone ahead and hard-coded them here because I just don't want to retype them up here. And I've created a private variable for player, which is basically just going to store the player's name. And in this example, I'm just going to go ahead and send a name to a server and retrieve a name from a server. I didn't bother going to set up a database because depending on what type of database you're using, if it's a relational database, you know, SQL, or other different various types of databases, that they set up differently. And of course, also depends what uh, operating system you're running on your, uh, your server as well. So as far as your server goes, Take a look for tutorials on that there on how to set those things up. But we went ahead and set up a, a non-GUI here. So hopefully none of this is new. If you're looking to communicate with servers, you really should understand this first. So I've gone ahead and just set up a label. All it does is display name. Let's actually go ahead and put some colon. Uh, we'll just leave it like that. Put a colon. Next thing is a text field, which I'm using uh, our variable player. And all it's going to do is just take whatever we type in and assign to. You should know how a text field works if you're looking at this. And then we got another button called send name, which is basically just going to send the name off to the server. And as you can see, it starts a coroutine. Originally, I didn't want to use coroutines, but really you should get in the habit of always listening for the response from a server. I really can't think of any situation where you would not want to do that. So I end up putting it back in anyway. And of course, if you're going to be listening, uh, they need to be coroutines. So I've gone ahead and created another button that just uh, get get name it's called and of course it just goes out and it loads up a name retrieved from a server. So let's go ahead and take a look at the GUI the way it's built right now. Nothing flashy. 
And you got a spot to enter your name. You're going to hit send name and of course uh, your get name button. So go ahead and let's look at those particular functions. So we're going to look at the load name first, which is called when you hit the get name button. Now throw in a debug log statement out right off the bat. And what this is going to do is just throw out saying, you know, getting your name from, and it's going to show the URL you're getting it from. And that's right up here. And then we're going to go ahead and use the WW class. We're going to create a, uh, a variable of it. And we're going to send in the get URL. And then we're going to wait for the response. If you don't wait for the response, you're just going to get an error. So you have to wait here. And then we're just going to go ahead and debug log out the response. Now, when you're going ahead and looking at the one on the wiki, there's a few options here. Uh, when you start looking at uh, what you possibly get, like one thing you want to look for is errors. And another thing is when you start actually writing your server-side scripts, you can actually create your own error codes and return those as well so that your application can look at it and go, oh, look, I've got a personalized error code of, you know, whatever, 502. Well, I wouldn't actually try to use the ones that the server uses, but uh, well, like a web server uses. But um, yeah, you can make your own custom error codes, send them back to your application, and then have your application act upon those. But we're trying to keep this really simple, so... We're just going to take the text. I know the web server is up and running, and I know that the script is just going to send back a name. That's all it's going to do. So for simplicity's sakes, this is it. And let's go ahead and we'll take a look at the save name function now. Of course, you know, they're both I enumerators. And I start off creating a new string, and I'll call this the URL string. Now we're going to take our post URL, which is just the variable up here. And this is where we want to send the name. And then I'm going to append on this little question mark, which is important. You have to put this after the URL. Well, I guess, again, depending on the type of server you're using. Uh, well, when we go over the scripts, I'll show it to you there, why it works this way. But then we're going to want name equals. And this is basically a way of assigning a variable in the URL. And we're going to use the escape URL. And this is just a way of taking a string, which we're passing in as player name, and formatting it to basically a URL safe format. And then after we do that, we're gonna go ahead and debug out what this whole string is that we create up here. Then we're gonna go ahead and create another variable here of www type. And we're gonna go ahead and send the string. Then of course, we're gonna wait for a response and then we're gonna just debug out whatever it is we get back. And that's pretty much it for this script. Like it's pretty simple. I've tried to cut out all the little as much as I can out of the other scripts to keep it as simple as possible. I do not recommend running it this way in your application. This is just you know, purely trying to get it down to the easiest form to understand. Uh, but let's go ahead and actually look at the server side scripts. Now again, these are extremely gutted as well. And I'm using PHP. Let's go in there. And I'm just using PHP because that happens to be running on this one server. So we're gonna start off with the get name. Now, when you're creating your script, there's a few things you're gonna to wanna to do. One is you're gonna to wanna to retrieve the data that has been requested. So when you send in your get string, uh, depending you know, what it is you wanna retrieve, you're gonna have this script go out, get whatever it is that needs. It's gonna format it in a response that your application can understand. And then it's just gonna send it back. Now, I didn't actually wanna get in and write applications. We might do it maybe later on with more advanced uh, scripts and stuff. I've actually got an application that communicates to my Drupal database to allow me to do things uh, over my iPhone directly on my my Drupal database, which is really cool. And we might eventually graduate up to that. We'll see, you know, what the interest is and then the time constraints, uh, especially with Drupal 8 coming out now. It's they're changing the way they do it. So again, not really part of this particular tutorial, but something we might look at a little bit later on. I don't deal with WordPress all that much, so probably won't be using it with WordPress. But anyway, the basis of this script is these are the things you're going to want to do, but eventually you're just going to want to send back a response or a response code. In this case, I'm just going to send back PD. And we can actually go to this URL. Uh, let me open up a web browser here. So we'll go to .NET slash XXX dash get name right there. And we see this is really, if you went to the website, this is all it's sending back. 
And let's also look at the post, but let's look at the script first. Now the post, pretty much the exact same thing. As you can see, you're gonna get the data the app has sent you, and you're gonna to wanna to run some sort of server-side validation on it. Uh, there's all sorts of ways you're gonna validate data. Again, depending on the language you're using, how you're gonna be using it, uh, take a look for tutorials on that specific stuff. But you're gonna to wanna to validate because you don't wanna be sending corrupt data anywhere. And after you've done that, you're gonna to wanna to format the data so that you well, can send it to wherever it is you wanna send it. Maybe it's a database, maybe it's some other application running on your server, wherever. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it's in a format that it can understand. And then after everything's done, eventually you're gonna to wanna to send back a response code just to make sure that your application knows that everything ran okay. And here's a, a little bit of an example here. Again, you'll see a little bit more in the Unity uh, version, which is, you know, I consider the next step up. Uh, what I'm doing here is just creating a variable in PHP. Uh, this is not a tutorial on PHP. And I'm going ahead and getting the variable name out of it, whatever restored in name. And let's go back into Unity, not Unity, right here. And remember I said we we're creating a variable here after this question mark. And we're saying name equals then player. Now you can put other things in there too as well, maybe like score, you can have name equals then you'll want this uh, escape URL player. Then you can also append on, you know, like score equals. You'll need that question mark once, but you are gonna need it there for at least PHP. Unless you're doing something special, you, you can put something else there, but by default, you're gonna want that question mark. But anyway, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get the name that it sent me. And instead of going through validating and stuff like that, which you have to do on your server, I'm just gonna quickly send back name received and then I'm going to append on the actual name that it sent me. So that's pretty much it for that. Let's go to the uh, script here. You're not going to get a whole lot. What was it again? Uh, bu -bu -bum. Post name, I think. Yeah, post name. And we're going to get an index here uh, on line eight, name received. So if we go ahead and take a look here, basically it's saying that, hey, you know, there's nothing here. That's fine. Let's go ahead into Unity and let's actually run the application now that you've seen everything. And let's take a look. Right off the bat, if we hit get name, I'll take a look here. It says getting the name from bergsergarcade.net slash and then the name of the script. And it just responds with uh, PD. And we'll go look at the script itself. Here are your debug statements. Sending. Of course it helps. If I'm looking at the right function, so here, getting the name from and then the URL and then whatever we got back. Great, so go ahead, we'll clear that. And let's go ahead, we'll send a name, we'll send a blank name. And of course, it tells us where it's sending it. And you'll notice here after the name, there's, there's nothing, right? And it says name received, of course, there's nothing. Let's go ahead, we'll clear that. Let's actually send a name, you know, Bob. And we'll send the name, and it, as you see here, it sends the name Bob. And the name received back from that script is Bob. So that's pretty much it. Yeah, I can't really think of an easier way to break it down. Uh, well, there's a few things I take all the debugs out, but I want them to, because I think they actually do help understand. Uh, but hopefully that helps uh, the people out there that are asking all these questions about how to communicate to a server. And I'll put a link to the, uh, the one on the wiki, the Unity wiki, and hopefully that gets you to the next step. And from there, you should be able to uh, start reading up on your server or your database, whatever application is you're trying to run over there. And let me know what uh, you end up creating with it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.